This is an account of my personal journey in watching Steven Universe, a show that I unfortunately slept on for so long but have constantly heard nothing but amazing things about. I finally sat down and took a look at the series and before I knew it, I was hooked. The rich characters, the deep lore, and the experience of what it means to be a person. It all feels so real and personal that I couldn't help but fall in love with a lot of what this show has to offer. Steven Universe is a Cartoon Network animated series created by Rebecca Sugar. It follows the coming of age of a young boy named Steven as he discovers secrets of the universe and himself. Voiced by Zach Callison, Steven Universe lives in a beach house attached to an ancient temple structure with three gems who serve as his parental figures, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl. Gems are an ageless alien species that take the humanoid form of their actual life form, their gem. They have different magical abilities such as seeing into the future, flying, jumping really high, healing, shape-shifting, summoning weapons at will, and regeneration. As long as their gems aren't affected. The overarching plot lies with family drama with the most powerful gems in the universe, the diamonds. It's musical, it's charming, it's flawed, it's fun. Steven Universe covers a lot of ground in the 180 episodes, two series, and one TV movie. So today, I wanted to talk about the show, my views and takeaways from the series, as well as what it was all about, and why I think it's a beautiful show. If you enjoy the video, may I interest you in the subscribe button? But for today, let's take a look at Steven Universe. Guess I'm making us breakfast. Welcome back to the 25 Days of Fringe Miss, where there's going to be brand new videos every single day from December 1st to December 25th. Hop aboard. Although Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl live on Earth, all gems have origins tied back to the alien gem homeworld planet. At the top of the royal food chain are the tyrannical diamonds, white diamond, blue diamond, yellow diamond, and pink diamond. They expanded their reach into the universe and began colonizing planets like Earth, planting and incubating their own species without regard to how it would affect the life currently existing on that planet. As most oppressive, prejudiced regimes grow, there is usually an opposing force of those who are willing to fight against against them. In comes Rose Quartz, Stephen's mother. Over 5,000 Earth years ago, Rose's army called themselves the Crystal Gems and led a historical rebellion that killed Pink Diamond, liberating the Earth from the Diamonds. She and what was left of her army, Garnet, Amethyst, and Pearl, stayed on Earth to continue protecting the life that thrived there. Rose fell in love with the human race, also fell in love with a human man. Enter Stephen's dad, Greg Universe, a wholesome guy who just loves rocking out. The two of them fall in love and create Steven, but because Rose is not human, she is only able to create Steven by passing her gem onto her baby, effectively choosing to give her life force to him, I guess. At least that's my interpretation as they don't explicitly say how she and Greg created Steven, probably because it's a kid's show and Cartoon Network is not exactly an ideal place to learn about the birds and the bees. Regardless, Steven is created and Rose has passed on, in a way. At the start of the series, the small town of Beach City, Delmarva, has a population of about 24, and we get to know just about everyone pretty intimately through the course of the five seasons. It's commendable too because each character is introduced slowly enough and is given enough time that we are able to understand what social groups they belong to, where they work, who they're related to, and where they live. Steven's bubbly nature leads him to having a pretty solid relationship with just about everyone in town, making the episodes which focus on the domestic life on Earth pretty enjoyable even though it distracts from the overall arching plot. We meet Connie, a young human girl from a neighboring town who quickly befriends Steven and later in the series trains with Pearl to fight alongside him, despite not being a gem. The two of them become best friends and share an incredibly close and semi-romantic bond that results in their fusion form of Stevani. And I'll address the fusion stuff in a second. We also meet Lars and Sadie, employees at the Big Donut, and follow their angsty teenage journey as a future rock star and space pirate. We meet Mayor Dewey, his son, all of the pizza family, Sour Cream and Onion, Mr. Smiley, and many more citizens of Beach City. The world here created in the show is full of interesting and fascinating characters that all feel unique to themselves. I'm serious. I can help. Fine. <laughs> 
Season one has a whopping 52 episodes, and I'm really glad it does because it really gives the audience time to settle down in Beach City and dig their toes into the sand. We get to explore the town, and having a micro lens for so much of the beginning of the series really made it feel that much more balanced out and less jarring when we slowly began to explore the universe in the later seasons. But in those episodes, we do get to learn more about each of the crystal gems. Pearl is voiced by Dee Dee Magno Hall. She is incredibly protective over Steven, to the point where she acts the most like a mother figure to him. She is a perfectionist who is constantly looking for validation because of low self-worth, which is understandable given the history of how her species was treated on their homeworld. Pearls are considered to be decorative personal assistants to higher status gems like diamonds and sapphires. Regarded as property and less like a sentient being, pearls are taught to be obedient and selfless. But on Earth, Pearl doesn't have a master to serve. In the beginning, of the series, she finds a new purpose in raising and keeping Steven safe, but when we see how she trains Connie to protect Steven, we get a glimpse into how she views her relationship to Steven or essentially to Rose. She viewed herself as much less than, as disposable. Pearl has a lot of character growth throughout the series and despite being a perfectionist, she still makes a ton of mistakes. Although she acts like the most mature one of the group, she actually is the most unstable and has the most room to grow. Amethyst is the cool ant. Voiced by Michaela Dietz, she is very laid back, frequently eating garbage and sleeping even though it's not necessary for her. She is messy, a hoarder, and incredibly impulsive. Out of the three of them, she is the most likely to indulge Steven in his childish antics. Maybe it's the handshake, or maybe it's the similar heights, but I just can't help but see them as best friends most of the time. But even though her characteristics make her seem immature, Amethyst is incredibly perceptive to other people's feelings. She knows when and how to help those around her, but when it comes to her own emotions, she's less eager to address them. Amethyst is the only one of the three to have come from Earth, formed in what is called the Prime Kindergarten. She was a product of the Diamond's attempt to colonize the Earth with sentient gems of their own species, except instead of emerging from her place in the Earth to join her Amethyst sisters to relocate to Homeworld as guards, she was a bit late. Her extra time in the Earth stunted her growth a bit, making her an abnormal Amethyst. This leads to her main insecurities being similar to Pearl's despite how different the two are. Amethyst's inferiority complex is partially due to self-hatred because of the problematic nature of her home, the Prime Kindergarten, and also due to her being defective. Over the course of the series, she grows and learns a lot about herself. Towards the end of the series, Stephen even admits to her that she is the most emotionally mature of them all. Garnett, voiced by musician Estelle, is the mysterious and cool aunt. Because of her very mellow and sturdy presence, she often has to mediate the group and is forced into the position of leader, and because of her quiet nature, she is more difficult to analyze than Amethyst and Pearl. The most important part about Garnett's identity isn't even revealed until the end of the first season. Garnett is actually a fusion, a ruby and sapphire who have fallen in love and prefer to be fused together, which kind of blew my mind a bit. Like, I, I wasn't perceptive of the two gems meaning more than what we saw, but in hindsight, it does make a lot of sense, and it's a cool reveal for the series. Sapphires, as I briefly mentioned earlier, are of high status in the gem homeworld, and usually are given an entourage consisting of a squad of three or more rubies. The two of them met when Sapphire was diplomatically called to an Earth colony by Blue Diamond, to use her ability of clairvoyance in fighting against the rebel forces. Sapphire predicts that she, herself, along with the two of her ruby guards, will be shattered, but their sacrifice will ensure that the rebellion would end. Instead, one of the ruby guards that acts on impulse saves Sapphire and opens up a whole new world of possible futures for Sapphire. They fuse together, changing the future as Sapphire knew it. Because they were a fusion of two different gems, they were rejected by the gems in the colony and decided to run away together, finding Rose Quartz and fighting in her rebel army. Because Ruby and Sapphire are so different, they create the harmony that makes up Garnet. But when lies are revealed or the two of them aren't in agreement, Garnet runs the risk of splitting. This offers such a rich visual representation of wearing thoughts in one's head, offering Garnet a lot of depth
depth as a character as the two gems together. Much like Ruby and Sapphire, Garnett is either hot or cold, jumping from one extreme to the other. Because of the vulnerable nature of her fusion bond, trust is everything to Garnet. So when concepts like forced fusion are introduced or when Pearl lies to her to fuse into Sardonyx, we understand why she reacts so harshly, because she maintains Sapphire's future vision. Garnet is also not good under pressure, prone to panicking when she doesn't understand a situation often because her ability to see the future has been shaken. So about 12 episodes in, we're introduced to the concept of fusion. Fusion is when two gems combine to make a whole different being, much like two parents making a child. That being is a combination of both gems, but is a whole different being in itself. Ruby and Sapphire combine to make Garnet, we see Pearl and Amethyst fuse together to form Opal, Garnet and Amethyst form Sugalite, voiced by Ninky Minjad. All the three gems combine to form Alexandrite, as well as many other gem combination possibilities. Eventually, when you throw Steven's abilities to fuse into the mix, we get an even larger world of even more exciting possibilities. Stevani, which is Steven and Connie, Steven and Pearl make Rainbow Quartz, Smoky Quartz, which is Amethyst and Steven, Obsidian, which is Garnet, Amethyst, Pearl, and Steven, and that's just really scratching the surface. This concept made watching the series that much more exciting, because there always felt like there are endless amounts of new characters to meet, and I'm already emotionally invested in all of these other characters who are fusing together. Although, Garnet and Steven's combo called Sunstone was a little bit of a letdown. Love the attitude, but I, but I don't love the design. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You are talking about things that you do not understand. Now that I've explained a lot of the important rules of the world of Steven Universe, the plot itself is quite simple. The largest plot that we focus on lies with the final bosses, the Diamonds, but that isn't really focused on until later in the series. In the first few seasons, the mini bosses that we face are the corrupted gems that are the result of a last ditch effort by the Diamonds to stop the rebellion. It's not really specified exactly what they did. Described as both a song and a flash of light, the result was corrupted, monstrous gems both on the home world and Earth. There's also the forced fusion gems that are the result of experimentation on Earth. The planet was no longer considered a practical place to have a colony. The diamonds decided to use it as a ground for experimentation for a forced fusion giant cluster of gems that would be a giant geo weapon. When the cluster takes form to emerge, it would most likely destroy the Earth due to its placement in its core. Having these varying levels of containment and smaller battles to win makes the series feel more full circle when there is a final face-off with the Diamonds in the series finale. The series was inspired by Sugar's relationship with her brother, who was also named Steven and also worked on the series as a background designer. During her time working on Adventure Time, Sugar was becoming well-known by the network by her writing and music writing skills, so she was approached and asked to pitch something of her own. In developing the idea of Steven Universe, Sugar was heavily influenced by her life in Maryland on the East Coast, where she grew up watching TV, playing video games, and drawing with her brother. In deciding what she wanted to focus her series on, she thought the best way to approach something that she would be pouring so much of her life into would be to make it something that she already loved, her brother. It felt like something that she could commit to and that she would always love and be passionate about. Because she grew up with him, Steven was already a character that she had been drawing from a young age. So she decided to mold the crystal gems as representations of various aspects of her relationship with her brother. There were times where she she could be casual like Amethyst, but also overprotective like Pearl, as well as a role model like Garnet. There was also heavy emphasis on sci-fi as a genre that the two of them loved while growing up. The concept of reverse escapism also helped form the show. Fantasy characters that become interested in real life and started to participate in human activities and sort of having a love affair with imperfect reality. It's all what really formed Steven as a manifestation of the love an alien gem had for humanity. The seven minute pilot episode that Sugar created was focused on the idea of a young boy who loved pink and had a magical gem in his belly button. In the pilot pitched in 2009, Steven used a time travel device to redo small moments in his life. Told from Steven's point of view, the crystal gems are always sheltering him from truths and hiding things from him in hopes of protecting him. An important defining part of the series is the audience exploring the world alongside Steven, getting to know the world around him, seeing the imperfections in the adults around him, as he learns more and more about the humanity of those who were once viewed as perfect is an essential part of growing up. 
The pilot was released on Cartoon Network's video platform on May 21st, 2013, and was also shown at San Diego Comic-Con in 2013, and later was subject of a 30-minute panel discussion about the series at New York Comic-Con a few months later. Picked up for 26 episodes, the first two episodes aired as the official premiere on Cartoon Network November 4th, 2013. In 2015, they started premiering the episodes in batches of five instead of once per week, which they dubbed Steven Bombs. And some even credit the success of the series to that unconventional format. Starving your audience of content then to only downpour unexpectedly on them created a very intense cult following that is kind of reflective of our current concept of binge watching. The music is also a core aspect of the series, from the insanely catchy theme song to the little jingles that Steven sings around the house, to his dad's music career. The music is key to the show's tone. Both Sugar and her partner, supervising director Ian Jones Cordy, worked on adventures Adventure Time prior to leaving the series to focus on Steven Universe. While she was working on Adventure Time, Sugar had written upwards of 20 songs for the series, and wanted to incorporate similar aspects of storytelling through music into her new series. To Sugar, musical theater and cartoons were very important to one another. This is a sort of emotive nature that is important in both ways of storytelling. Sugar worked mainly on the ukulele and the electronic omnichord, which is probably what leads to the music being simple yet effective. There's a lot of gamer and weeb culture in this series like anime, gaming, film. Sugar states that she wanted representation from everyone in their interest here. She says that when they wrote the series, they were writing from a very personal place, specifically from parts of their childhood. So incorporating the things that they loved growing up was very easy for them to do. I have some special friends who wish to meet you. Danger is my middle name. Your middle name is Cutie Pie. Artistically, the series is highly applauded for its beautiful backgrounds and immersive art style. The lack of focus of detail and specificity gives the series a simple yet effective look, similar to how the music works. Sugar, loyal to her name, wanted the series to look delicious and magical. There are inconsistencies in some of the characters' designs episode to episode, but this could be attributed to Sugar's pretty lax view of artistic freedom with the storyboarders. Steven Universe, the movie, was released on September 2nd, 2019, and takes place after the events of the series finale in a world where the major battles have been fought, and Steven and his friends are working to build the future that they have been fighting for, well, over 5,000 years. We are then introduced to a new character, Spinel, who was Pink Diamond's past best friend who was abandoned when she decided to leave to go to her Earth colony. Neglected for thousands of years, she seeks revenge on Pink Diamond, or Steven and his home. Preceded by a series marathon, the musical aired on Cartoon Network and was digitally released on September 3rd. It basically sets up what the following series would focus on as well. So following the movie, Steven Universe Future aired on December 7th, 2019. This series served as an epilogue and had one season with 20 episodes. Future kind of serves the purpose of the aftermath of the end of the original series. They have to pick up the pieces and look after the reformed gems that have been affected by the actions of the diamonds. They create a school and do their best to integrate them into society. In addition, it interestingly dives into the psychology of Steven after he realizes that he has fulfilled his main purpose in life that he grew up with. We see how his relationship with Connie grows and complicates with age, as well as the people in his life moving on from a certain time in life. This is a good reflection of how a lot of fans may be married to the content that is taking place in a specific point in time, but that can't be held on to forever. People grow and change, which is the main over overarching plot of the entire Steven Universe universe. In addition to the movie and epilogue, there are tons and tons of games and books. For a series that was heavily born and bred in a Comic-Con environment, it only makes sense that the gamer culture would be reflected in how the series was approached outside of the series. Mobile games, console games, browser games, toys and merch like Funko Pops, plushies and comics. There was even a series of one to two minute minisodes, or shorts, that accompanies the seasons of the original series. There there were also a few crossover episodes with other Cartoon Network shows like Uncle Grandpa, and I promise me bringing up this crossover Nexus event from OKKO OK Let's Be Heroes is more relevant this time because Garnet is one of the main characters in that episode. As for the future of Steven Universe, after Steven Universe Future, Sugar has disclosed in an interview with Polygon in 2020 that there are no official continuations in development at this time. They mentioned that the series is going to continue off screen 
screen, but that they are unsure of what is going to come next. But again, this is all subject to change. Overall, there are both positives and negatives in this series. There are very impressive payoffs and some of them are letdowns, but there is a vast amount of content here. Content that I had fun watching. Moments that I thoroughly enjoyed and will remember forever. The music is catchy. The characters are three-dimensional. The setting has charm. Overall, I just really enjoyed Steven Universe. I love how the show is true to characters, emotions, and specifically growth, and how that affects others differently. While it has all of the staples of a fun sci-fi action epic, it never forgets the heart, the most important real gem of them all. It's what makes the show special. It's what makes us special. It's a beautiful reflection of life that you can find yourself in through the different characters and how we explore them. I wish that I had been there from the start to experience the show as it came out, but I am glad that I can binge watch the series as hitting play on the next episode was my catalyst for being so enthralled all the way throughout. I also love everything with the lion that comes into Steven's life, how it ties into Steven's mother's past and holds these story building secrets hidden inside of its mane. It's so weird and wholesome and the lion's pretty cute. Overall, this was just my experience for the show, what I saw from the series and what I took away from it. But what about you? What did you take away from Steven Universe? Let me know your thoughts on the show in the comments down below. Thanks so much for watching. Like and subscribe. Later.